Great, all right. So now that this uses Monaco, the experience is a lot better. Um, but what it really needs is a way to handle errors without losing its mind. That would be really nice. But at the moment, I'm not totally sure what's causing the um, the errors, so... Yeah. Or causing, I guess, the errors to prevent it from working. Because this will autoplay, and I could... I could make this have an error like this and I fixed it so it'll stop but if I remove that error like it's broken into perpetuity I don't know why that happens so let's see um what should be happening is when this renders either because I hit the render button or it does it on the timeout under scene wait is this an app render scene it's just gonna clear that timeout and then emit the render Okay. I'll just make sure that's actually happening. Like so. So, that, so that's what I expect when I remove this. It does emit the render, but it doesn't do anything. So it does get here. So it presumably runs render scene, gets here. Um, if it hit that error, it would have emitted a pause, so it would have Pause playback. So it'd come here. Play render that value, that'll be false. So it'll come here to start new scene. Which just all looks correct. Can the start new scene it goes true? All of this looks right. Then I'll switch play render that value to true. I know that's the callback. So I'll just go here to scan to start new scene. So that should go here. That's kind of weird. This is done by toggling. That's probably going to be something buggy. Oh, it gets set to false in the callback. Interesting. So I'll see if that happens after the error. If I go here, it an error. So that breaks it, remove this. It emits the render, but it doesn't do anything after that. Here, emit render, editor, get value, selected scene that value. So why would that stop here? Um I'll just log this. Unless 
say like the oh man. Say like this equals and then just put the, the variable there. Okay, then do this. Play under loop dot value equals false. Now that's true. So to go here to start a new scene. Start new scene. Uh, so we'll set this to true. This must be false by default, right? Yeah, it is. So why is that not updated? Hey, Daryl Golden, what's going on? I'm just doing some error handling so that I can hopefully make the user experience on this a little better. Because this is usable right now, but if you try to use it without opening the terminal or the console here, then it gets... then it's not that usable actually. Because if you hit a Python error, it just won't tell you. So it sets this to true. Was this already true or something? I guess it must have been. Like if I console log what this was before. Then if both of these are true, then that would make some sense. A little. Uh, yeah, little, I guess. Okay, so it's already true, then it's setting it to true again, so that would be- that would explain why this isn't updating. Okay, so the first time I render here... Actually, any of the times that I render first... No, the first time this play render loop is false. So it'll go here and it'll do start new scene here. And then this? This basically needs to set canvas start new scene to false on its own. I guess. Why does canvas finish not do this? Oh, I guess it does, because it does run canvas callback. Oh, but I set that callback to nothing. Um, here, it doesn't do anything. What needs to happen is here, it still needs a callback. And that callback is just set. Um, canvas start new scene to false. Where the heck is Canvas starting scene? Oh, there. And so anytime you start a new scene... Now the first time... I hate callbacks, this is so dumb. If this is true, meaning it's already playing, then it'll start 
the scene here, come back, run this canvas callback. Oh, and this will do canvas start new scene to true. Oh, so this always does have the callback. Anytime this is switched to true. Anytime start new scene is called, this callback will be set. So what I thought was the problem might not have been the problem. The question is why, if there's an error, why would this not call the callback here? It should still call canvas finished here, which should call this. say setting this to um false this is the starting new scene um no this should be starting new scene okay So it admits this render play render loop dot value equals false. And it's that's canvas start new scene to false here. So that, that worked perfectly. Set it back to false. And this time I send canvas start new scene to true on landing 210. It sets it to true. Wait, how is it false? Because dollar canvas start new scene of value. I know it's always setting it to true here. I should say should print out its original value, then print out what it's changing it to. And here I'll set it to false. False, it's set to true, and it starts the new scene, but it's never set back to false, so that is a problem. How is that possible, though? It says starting new scene right here. Oh, it, it fails during setup. Interesting. Um, so if this fails during setup, when can I set the canvas thing back to um, false or whatever? It feels a lot like this isn't the right way to do this. 
Canvas start new scene. It's basically um doing a bunch of initialization for the scene. Is there a way to do this on my own? Kind of register render functions. Well, even this is passed down from the props. Oh, I need a reference to the canvas. I think. Okay, that does almost nothing. That does almost nothing. This does almost nothing. Is there really any reason I have to do this down here? Because I also already have access to the scene, I think. Where did the scene come from? Oh no, this is a... This is a 3JS scene. So I won't have access to that. I think. Wait, no, this has to be a mana scene. Oh no, it's not. Three dot scene. That's doing scene equals new scene. So I use scene as a global. Yeah, that's where I have to do this. So. Maybe I could move this scene object into the landing page. I think that should be doable. And then that'll be a prop. It would be pretty weird though, I think. Or would it? See, the renderer only needs a canvas. It's only the render function that needs a scene. Maybe I could just move that entire thing into the root component. I think that would simplify the rendering logic a fair bit. Because this operation, canvas start new scene, which requires this awkward callback. Um, it could just be done here. What is... What does this do? Play render loop dot value equals false. Oh yeah, that kind of has to be done that way. Not really even getting around that. Maybe I should just move this into the scene. Or into the landing page. Like, the scene, the camera, and the renderer. Oh, wait. Render.dominant.addEventListener. I'll still have to do some sort of initialization in this component because I have to add this to the DOM element. Yeah, so I'd still end up doing something like this. I'd end up listening for a signal. And like, when I get that signal, I have to do this. Okay, I wonder if I can just emit this earlier. I wonder if that'll help. Here. Cannot read property emits options. 
What does that mean? Emit of can is finished. <laughs> Unhandled air during execution of scheduler flush. There's likely a view internals bug. That's annoying. It probably means I can't emit if that thing has an error, if I had to guess. Split panes. It doesn't go any further than the split panes, though. So maybe I need, like, a try. Let's see if this helps. This had to be, like, a... Finally, I think. And this catch air, what should happen? Previous time stamp equals null. get here oh I can just have like a status or whatever so here this can be a false here this can be a true and the previous timestamp will be a null Okay, so this will emit canvas finished, so that'll go here. That'll emit canvas finished of oh, the same thing. This has to be like a status. to pass that status. So then this callback is going to get that status, pass it here. So that brings me to here, I think. I'll just say if status, and status means it happened successfully. So all of this should happen. And if it doesn't, then what? Well, I shouldn't set this to true. I should set this to false either way. Canvas callback equals null, and I should do that either way. It's just only if the status is set do I do the play render loop equals true, I think. But now I can see if that gets set to false. That looked a lot more tame than usual, which is interesting. I guess because I caught it rather than just letting it 
propagate all the way up. And then I'll try doing this. Okay, and then that did work. So that's pretty good. But really, I should be doing this with a draw function, probably. Like putting an error here. And that didn't totally lose its mind either, so that's good. Okay, and that worked too. So I didn't... I didn't actually follow all of that out, but it looks like it worked itself out pretty well. Where are all those console logs? Is that all of them? Canvas 63. Landing 191. App 213. That might have been all of them, I can't really tell. I would really prefer not to have to do this thing, though. Like, setting a sentinel value and then... emitting something to unset the sentinel value? That's really weird. It's basically like, when I click the render button, I want to run code on this child component, so how would I do that? Hmm. Yeah, that's really weird. A function and a child component? I think I've searched this before. An at click equals child does say hello. Create a ref for the child component and you'll be able to call the methods and access all the data it has. Maybe that's what I have to do. There's no gain from using a prop slash watcher method. This is what I'm doing. And that method is far more convoluted, so I have to dig in the child component to understand what's going on. This is... Yeah, I think this is just true. This person says it's not recommended. You should rely on the contract. What the heck does that mean? The contract in view relies on the fact that the parent communicates with the children via props and children commit with the parent groups via emit for events. So yeah. Is this person saying put a function on the child component? Define trigger data on the parent? Pass that trigger and watch it. Yes, that's what I was doing. I don't like the way how a prop is being used as a trigger here. Yeah, it's weird. And you are now as much relying on the eternal structure of the component. In the internal structure of the component, you're relying on the props that the component exposes. Hmm.
Maybe this just requires thinking about the design some more. Okay. But from a, from a standpoint of air handling, that works a lot better. So for example, I should be able to close this. And, uh... If I put something that doesn't make sense... I mean, this is exactly what I checked. If I have a setup that doesn't make sense... There needs to be an indication that an error occurred here. But it is good that later on, if I fix that, it'll fix itself. Which means I can do things like change this to a radius of three, and it'll do that on its own while the tangent goes off screen now. Another 2.5. Oh, the draw function doesn't do anything here. I don't really want to change anything of this. Maybe I could change the thickness of something. Um, where's the circle? This stroke width equals six. If I update that. I hope I accounted for that. Yeah, that works. But I already think it's thick enough. Really? Okay, but it's really nice that that handles those arrows on its own. Now I used to log them, probably here. And I should probably log them there by default. That's probably what should happen. Hmm. So there should be like tabs here or something that lets you switch between the terminal and seeing logs. Let me see if I can even... Here I catch the error if there's an error. Oh, and here I also catch an error if there's an error. Then I emit pause. Interesting. I guess that makes sense. But what I want to do is print... I was going to just console log the error. Okay, that worked. You even got the line number right. So that's pretty good. Okay, okay. So what I want to do is emit this error up to the app. And then print it to the screen or whatever here. So I am probably going to need this to have like tabs to switch between the terminal and the logs mm, which means some UI stuff gonna be like a toolbar not quite well sort of like this I don't even know how it's styled this thing. This is what it'll have to be, tabs. Okay. Hmm. 
W tabs items equals. Oh, it's gonna need like some sort of content here. Which I'm sure it has. Event slots item content. Yeah, that's what I have to do. Item content dot x. Oh, it's for that index. Item title. Okay. So that'll be on the terminal here? Okay, this, maybe this won't be as bad as I possibly thought. What I have to do is put the tab component basically where the terminal is. Colon items. I don't want a list like this. I have to do item content dot. No oh, way. Slots. I wish I knew how to use. Okay, like this. How to use templates. So I have to do this. Content out one, I guess. I guess. It says starting at one. Mm, but it doesn't like that. It doesn't support any modifier. Well, that's annoying. Does that mean I put a list here or what? X and an integer starting at one. I wish there was an example of this. As a V model, maybe this is supposed to be just a list or something, but how do you pass a list to a template? It doesn't really make sense. Custom title for a single tab. Maybe they do this with the titles. Just using item title equals index. Oh, is that what I used to do? W tabs. Like have an items list. And then like set this to a index or whatever. Because it looks like it's getting this index variable from nowhere. Is this me not knowing how view works?
No unused. I put one here. Unexpected token. Customizing the tabs and title content. This must be it. It is using whatever, and like dot a number. Item title dot three. Why dot three? And the title is an icon, a span, and then another icon. A heart, then the title. Okay, so like this. Equals item. And item is read from this, which is an object. Interesting. Kind of complicated. Items equals tabs. Okay, so let me try this dot one. I'm just going to see if that crashes. Because I'm not totally sure why it would. Definitely something wrong with it. Okay. Okay, so I guess I need... I need, like, to have an items list for some reason. So I'll just put item here, tabs. I'll just make that some random variable. Doesn't have to be reactive, really. Can I just do like logs terminal? Okay, so now this can buy tabs, this can get this item. And this can show this, the terminal, hopefully. I guess that worked. I guess. I wonder if I can just remove this. Like, equals whatever. Okay, and that didn't crash anything either. Which is great. A title and a content attribute. Huh. A 
Alternatively, you can provide an integer to loop through it and create X tabs. You can then use the individual slots, item title, whatever, and item content, whatever. I think that's what I want to do. In which case, can I do items equals two? Not do any of that. Okay, okay. Item title dot X. It's a slot. Um, item title key, item content key. Why can't I just have a list of titles? Well, it did say... It did say that if you have a list... If I do like this, with a title... Title entry and a content entry, then I can overwrite that by setting item content dot whatever. I think. Yeah, because it says can be overridden here. But I think that'd be too much work. I think I just want to do this. My key I can put. Um, it should be... Yeah, I'll just make it terminal for now. Really, I want the terminal to be the second. The second one of these. has the quotes. Great. So that's kind of doing what it's supposed to do. Now all I need is a way to make this take up the entire height. and make the terminal take up the entire height. Here's the bar, here's the content. There's a content wrap. Will this be height 100? Or height auto? I guess auto didn't work. Well. And this thing is only 24 pixels for some reason. Oh, this is so weird. I guess I don't want this border around the terminal anymore. I can have the terminal with this decoration. But I don't know if I need that now. And honestly, maybe I never should have had that decoration in the first place. To have like separation of responsibilities or whatever. I'll see what happens if I just get rid of the styling. Close, actually. I hope the editor doesn't do that. It doesn't look like it does. Yeah, that's doing what it's supposed to do. 
But this can't be allowed to expand, like, forever. Terminal. Okay. Maybe it does still need that styling. Like the same styling? I just take off that background. Uh, not quite. Well, only if its parent was at 100% height. Can I control that? Content class. So maybe... CSS class to the tab content. I'm not sure if that's what I want. Here's the bar. Here's the content wrapper. And then here's the content. So hide 100% on this won't work. Okay, I'll try using content class and then setting it that way. I don't think it's going to work. This doesn't even have the 100% height. Does this have it? I actually don't know what has it. Content class equals tab content. Why did that not do anything? Wonder... Here. Okay, that's kind of useless. Hmm. I guess all I would have to do is enforce... Enforce a height on the terminal, I think. So I did... Eight four hundred pixels. You think that worked? If I go down more, it holds to that. So that's doing what it's supposed to do. It's just that four hundred pixels is super arbitrary. Wait, where's the bottom of the- oh, this is a No, wait, where's the bottom of this? I don't know why I can't see the bottom, like, line or whatever. Because it has it here. Is the terminal covering it?
It was, I think. Yeah, it was. Okay. So if I was going to do that, I'd want this to be somewhere around 300, but that'd be really... That'd be pretty silly. Probably wouldn't deal well with resizing either. Okay, so this content class thing basically didn't work at all. I wonder if I can... Okay, I'm going to take the styling off of this. Well, off of that. Then I'm going to have to struggle to do this flex box. So this, if I add display flex to the content, <laughs> um, direction column, I think that's what I want. And here, flex like one. Well, that didn't help. <laughs> Should be stretch. But stretch didn't work either. I wonder if I can actually do a height. Do a webkit fill available? No, that doesn't work either. Okay, so I think the next thing I'll have to try is here the content wrap. This has to be one well, of no, the parent of this. This has to be displayed flex, I think. make it columns that no and make that column and this if this has flex one no that didn't do it mm. do I want a line self stretch or justify Nope. Oh, the tabs. Now this isn't a hundred percent. Maybe if this has a height one hundred. I hate CSS. This I feel like. Okay, so that worked. Now I feel like actually... Wait, height 100? Okay, that would work. Then this... Maybe this can have flex one? Flex something. Auto, sure. But W tabs, this needs to have... Um, a flex style. Okay. Perfect.
Okay, and then... Night 100, I think. Alright, so that works. I wonder if there's something other than 100 that does this. And surprised WebKit fill available doesn't work. But whatever. Wait, 100 actually seems wrong. Why wouldn't 100 mean 100% of the parent? Oh, it does. Wait. Can I skip that and just make this have like a flex something? Flex one, guess not. Okay. If I give this height 100% and this flex. Wait, why is this not flexing? It was the content wrap. So this has height 100. Okay, what if I make this side 100 and this not flex? Okay, so I need both. The tabs need height 100 and the content wrap needs flex 1. I prefer if that didn't need flex one. Well, let me just redo this, see how it does now. So this, its parent isn't tall enough, and its parent isn't tall enough. The W tabs is tall enough. There's a wrapper, and then there's the content. So here, if I just did height, is there any height? No, there's nothing that works here. Man, let's say I did something crazy. Even that didn't work. Uh oh. What I do? I just need basically hide 100 on everything. So this. The content wrap. The content itself. And then the terminal. I think that's what I have to do. Whoops. There we go. Is there any better way to do that? I guess not. If it didn't have this wrap thing, it'd be a lot easier, but oh well.
So W basically this. So to do that for the wrapper. And that for the content. Then the terminal. Um, I'll just put this directly on the component. Okay, that looks correct. Okay, let's see if this, um, close. Okay, so that doesn't do what it's supposed to do at all. It needs a max height or something like that. One of these needs a max height. Or like overflow, scroll, something like that. Actually, maybe now I can go back to this and have that old do this sort of thing. I don't know if that updated on the fly. It didn't. Oh, I didn't even save it. I'll just refresh again. not to do that ever again. Okay, so if I just made all these margins zero, I think that would actually look more natural since it's already in this container. This zero 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 zero. Yeah, I think that looks more natural. Yeah, and I could round this out more if I wanted to. Great. One tab down. Now the as for the um the logs. I actually want the logs to be first. I guess it's basically just a text box. This log thing's um but logs here or something like that. Okay. 
Okay, I guess I... Maybe I shouldn't worry about styling this. It would be really nice if all of the Python standard out went here. That would be really natural. To be able to write the code over here and then print it right to there. I guess I could just use another instance of whatever it is, jQuery terminal, but I kind of hate jQuery terminal. And I can't even find the terminal. Test console, console HTML. Yep, that is still jQuery terminal. When's the next release of this? Now it's at 18.1. Oh, and MD Boom released it. That's cute.
guess I can't add an element here. Or can I? Okay, I want this to be just like a ton of spam. Okay, that's not doing what I want it to do at all. Maybe there's a component, some sort of component for like showing a bunch of text. A text area? Not quite. No auto grow and resizable. I mean, it should be possible to make this write only. Making it unreactive to user interactions. But I don't want it to be faded. Search JavaScript logs component. I feel like this isn't supposed to be that hard. I'm just not good at it. Maybe I do actually need the jQuery terminal here. But I hate that thing so much. Make this have height inherent and also make this gray or something. A little less annoying. Oh, the logs there. Still doing the same thing. Like, it isn't super clear. I guess most of the... The parents of this component... Jeez, this even overflowed the tabs. Yeah, you can't even see the bar. Anyway, this has height 100%, this has height 100%. This is height 100%. What if I do max height? I do something smaller. 50%. Okay. Okay, this is sort of... This is like trying to do the right thing. I think. What if I do max height 100%, I'll do height 100%? Then like overflow hidden. This got super quiet. That's a little better. Um, it's still overflowing. 
It isn't doing overflow hidden, basically. Why? I don't know why it's going to this height. Like the height it's starting at. Maybe what I I don't want to have. I don't want the logs to be that high. It's right out at the start. Maybe this starts out empty. And now, if I update the logs... So... Okay, well now it's letting them overflow, which is what I want. So if I do this within on mounted at the end of on mounted or whatever, now I do logs that value equals put logs here. I think that worked. Let's see. Nope. Didn't like that either. Oh, it's because 100% is too high, actually. That kind of makes sense. This should be like WebKit fill available. But it's not working. W tabs. This should be a height 100% though. This probably shouldn't. This should be some sort of WebKit fill available. I think. Mm. I'm gonna have to focus this thing primarily around um, how the logs work. But I don't think height 100 is actually appropriate here. Maybe this one needs to be styled the same way the terminal is. I don't know if that worked or not. Okay, I think that worked. Maybe? Why is there this padding? Okay, don't want that there. Uh, maybe I do. No, I don't think so actually. I think the padding should go on the on the logs thing. Okay, now I can see if overflow scroll. Okay, that's what I want, I think. I think. Why are the lines wrapping?
not totally sure where their lines are wrapping. Content. So this is on the div. Here, hide a hundred. So here I'll do overflow scroll. Oh my god. It says overflow hidden. Is overflow here twice? Oh, I put it on the wrong thing. Okay, this looks kind of better. If I can get rid of this padding. Following that, it'll be basically fine. And I'll just want to change the the text colors. It still has that padding. Why? Three tabs, double underscore content, this. Put padding zero here. That's super annoying because the same is the same selector that's done here and my selector didn't work maybe this is where i can use that content class thing from whatever it was the tabs this and just see where that gets where that gets added to the HTML it gets added here which is where I want to get rid of the padding so maybe I feel like this isn't gonna work. If I go to the tab content, if I create a class here. Wait, where did I go? Maybe that'll do it. But I think it won't. Yeah, it didn't. Dang. The option that makes the option pretty useless if Yeah, there's my selector here. Okay. So that doesn't work and that doesn't work. What I'll have to do is probably add an ID to this or something like that. Um, let's see what CSS can do for me. Let's 
So type selectors I don't have. Class selectors. Exclamation important. Bad practice, you say. Okay, so maybe I can not do the bad practice thing. Actually, wait, what does the single space do? My ID, my ID span. And dot container div and these are in the opposite order, aren't they? Or div dot container. Any el any div element that is a child of any element with a class name of container. It's for divs that have a class name of container. Okay. So maybe what I want here if I do this space and then this Then, maybe I can put padding zero there. Okay, it looks like that worked. Great. That basically does what I want. Okay, let's change the background color to something that isn't crazy. And then text color to probably white. Sure, that looks fine. Ish. Now this div can have padding. So I'll do PA2. Okay, I think that'll look a little slightly better. Now, when this has logs, they'll be kind of readable. Logs.value. Okay, so let's do that. Now, just to test this, try to test this. Let me go back to, let me go to both these catches and then there's an error. I mean, errors aren't strings. So I can't just paste an error there. Now just two string. Okay, so maybe what I can do is I can emit like set error with this. This is for the setup. I'll just do that one for now. What this will do is update the logs basically. Error back to string. 
or not equals, but I want to append it. This would be error. Okay. And if I... I guess that worked. I is not defined. I guess I don't want that entire trace back. But if I replace this with a different ear, it did replace it, which I guess what all I could expect. If I extre extend the string, and cat, String one dot cut cat. Oh yeah, that's fine. Now I'll mess something up. Okay, so now it cause an error here. That worked, I guess. I put like slap back radius plus equals like three. Uh, it needs a new line. I guess we should have, have the new line at the end. Like this. What happened? Oh. I don't know if I escape that. Still doesn't have a new line. Why? Why? Put backslash in twice? I don't see why that would help. Maybe this. Maybe JavaScript by default doesn't do that? Oh, JavaScript has... Oh, I might have to do like a break tag or something. Yeah. To BR. That's annoying. Okay. Well, I guess since, uh, 
I also want to include the any new lines that occur in the two string. This should just be its own function. It really should. This should be like a pen bearer. Um, and this should just be called error. Function. This or should be concat logs equals logs dot concat. Actually, this dot two string dot concat. This dot replace whatever. Be long stop value. Now, when I emit that error, it'll call append error. I think with the same argument. Maybe. No, that time it just did nothing. Maybe because I didn't save that. I should probably actually refresh it too. Now it's just doing that, the BR thing. This just isn't showing new lines. Wait. Back R. Back to back R. Or in or something. Hmm. And a new line not working seems like a weird thing to search. Or organize your text into paragraphs. I think this is just regular HTML. But VR isn't doing anything here. Maybe, although this isn't being interpolated into HTML. just back in. Oh, back in didn't work. I already saw. Well. 
that value that split. I'll just try that. I'm not super confident it'll work. Still didn't work. Man, that's really annoying. I'm wondering how it looks if this is an array. If I do that, yeah, it doesn't... It doesn't actually break them. A backslash and then <laughs> let me try that a a backslash and then an enter and then B that didn't work either Yeah, that doesn't count. Well. Oh, maybe I can use grave quotes. Maybe. I did not like about this. Doesn't need the close parentheses. Why does it not like that? You probably can't have this new line. I guess. Okay, now I have no idea what it's doing. Or complaining about. Okay, this close parentheses. Same story. Okay. I'm going to go, I guess, search the internet on how to do new lines. And this is also, I think this is also suppressing spaces. Or is it? This is traceback whatever. There's a new line in... Oh, maybe that is just one space. No, that's two spaces. So that's suppressing that, too. And then there's a new line. It looks like the second new line is working. Maybe I can print... What if I just printed this?
that has a new line. Um, maybe need the wrapper or whatever. String of whatever. There's JSON that's stringify. View, um, show escape characters in a string. And this actually shows it working. Oh, this has a double backslash. Okay, so A backslash backslash N B. It still didn't work. Okay, well, that's fun. Maybe it needs spaces between it, but that'd be really silly too. Oh no, it showed that. Okay, I'm gonna have to figure out how JavaScript does its string interpolation. But I'm gonna do that in the next stream and um, call it there for now. So, thanks for watching.